God is so good. Amen. Amen. And that we had him put this tent, tent up, not because of me, but because we were concerned the camera was going to overheat being in the sun this long. So, because I'm preaching a long time today, we don't want that camera to overheat. No, just kidding. <laughs> Praise God. You can all be seated. Well, as has been mentioned today, can you hear okay? Can you hear me all right? Uh, today is Memorial Day. And as has been said, I'll say it again, we are remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice uh, to protect our country, to protect our Constitution and the rights that it guarantees, one of them being the ability, the freedom to not only assemble together, but to Worship God with no restrictions Amen. by the government. Yes, now, we are in compliance, at least with the mayor of Aurora, based on something he just said recently. I didn't know if we would be today. I didn't think we would. I thought we would be in compliance five days from now. So I said, hey, you know what? We have the First Amendment. Amen. But uh, next week, Next week is Pentecost Sunday, so here, here yeah. I wanted to do it, this, well really I was planning on doing our outdoor service next week, but then as we were praying we felt led to do it to start this week and to kind of get our feet wet. Next week I would like to have the full band set up, which we haven't had, uh, it's been 10 weeks today, 10 weeks ago was our last Sunday morning service inside the building, 10 weeks ago with Stephen Dufresne when he was here. And of course we had a Wednesday night service. So it's been a long time, but next week we will be outside again. The weather is looking to be good. And here's what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to those on live stream. I'm speaking to those in cars. I'm speaking to those here who are sitting outside. We got a few sitting in the garage there. My family, I guess they're privileged to be in there. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you know, Pentecost Sunday, they were all in one place in one accord. And of course, the Spirit's been given. And so it's not like God's going to pour out His Spirit again. The Spirit's been poured out and we can receive of His fullness. Uh, as we empty ourselves, then we can be, be, become full of the Spirit of God. And we have to yield to the Spirit of God. But I would like to get as many people as can and feel comfortable to sit outside, we have got room to park more cars. We got parking lot over there. We got parking on the road. We could have way more than our our church sitting here. And so next week, now again, I'm not. I don't want to put any pressure on anyone. Uh, you may feel if you feel more comfortable in your car, that's fine. But I'm, we're going to kind of, you know, hey, wear a hat, wear sunglasses. Uh, do whatever, you know, dress more casual, and there's just benefit. This is really the first time, other than my, the family and the few staff we've had here, to, uh, we've been preaching to cameras or to, and a couple of people, and we, or we've been preaching to cars where you really can't hardly see. I can see a few faces because your windows are open, but like the cars over there, I can barely see you. You can't, it's a lot easier to preach when you see people. Amen. And it's not just for my benefit, but there's some there's a blessing involved in us coming together and seeing people. You know, when you, I've been on plenty of missions trips, and you have to be ready for anything. You, I mean, you, I've wore suits and preached in over a hundred degree temperatures with over a hundred percent humidity, and been totally drenched afterwards. Well, we're not asking you to even do that, but you know what? If you did. It wouldn't hurt you. That's right. That's right. It would help keep the dry cleaners in business. That's right. So anyway, praise God. So we, we, we can't really salute them, but we remember those who have given their lives, the sacrifices that they made. Uh, freedom is not free. Amen. People have paid a price for freedom. Now, even spiritually, now today, Memorial Day is a secular holiday but there's there's but it's still good to uh to to remember but it, there's also some spiritual application 
We need to be thankful for those who have gone on beyond us, who have paid a price to get revelations from God, who have prayed a price, who have prayed. Uh, and, you know, we can't earn anything from God, but sometimes for our family members to get saved, our family members to grow, other people to come into the kingdom, we have a price to pay. And sometimes if we don't pay that price, it won't benefit those people. In other words, if we don't spend time praying for people, we might think, hey, I got everything I need. We're, that's not what it's all about. That's right. It's, that's not what it's all about. So anyway, next week, Pentecost Sunday, Amen. we're going to do the same thing. Now, here's what I made a revision. I, as we were sitting there, I, I decided to make a slight revision. As you can see, no one's wearing a mask outside, which is okay. Here's what we're going to do. So you can take your masks off uh, unless you don't want to. I think most everybody wants to. Uh, but when we, before services, well, before we're seated and after services, that, especially if you're going to be closer to, than six feet, just put your mask on. If you want to, I'm not going to tell you you can't shake someone's hand, but you know what? Put, put a mask on. Okay. Not because I'm fearful that you're going to get it, but you know, I'm, we're, we're just trying to comply with what a lot, you know, we're trying, to, we're doing it for the benefit of other people, not so much for the benefit of us. Really, the mask isn't doing you any good. That's right. It's just maybe helping someone not be afraid, or maybe if you cough or sneeze, okay. But if you're six feet away, it's not, and let, unless you're a preacher preaching under the anointing, it's not going to go further than six feet. <laughs> so even if I get really anointed today, you're, even the first row, you are, you are frying up. Randy Greer was here, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, anyway. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to pray again. Father, we thank you. Thank you I might wander around some, and if I do, then you're out there on live stream. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus, for coming to take our place, for dying for, for our sins so we could go to heaven and not hell. But, Lord, it's not just so we can have eternal life. Uh, life in heaven, but Lord, so we can have a better life here, so we can have a relationship with you, so we can have fellowship with you, so we can have all the things that you want your children to have. We thank you for sending Jesus, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you came and you suffered. You endured uh, for the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross, and, but you had the joy of seeing many sons and daughters come into the kingdom. We thank you for your anointing on the rest of this service. I thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost. We thank you. The word of the Lord will go forth with free course today. We'll have free course in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 So if you got your Bible, say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I, am what it says I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God, and I'll never be the same, never, 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 never the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Our intention is to continue doing outdoor services until the Lord leads us otherwise, uh, and we will have our, our, obviously we want to meet on Sunday morning at, at 10.30. But if, if there's ever a time where it looks like it's not going to be good weather, then our alternate plan is Saturday night at 5. But unless we let you know, just figure Sunday morning at 1030. So we'll look at next next week, Saturday and Sunday looks good. Uh, and because it's just, I didn't want, you know when we did the last week, we did Saturday night instead of Sunday. Yeah. I thought, I'm not even doing it for, it's not, it's not for our benefit that we're doing it. Really, when uh, all the work that we're doing, there's some people that have been working extra hard during this whole shutdown. I'm wanting us, church, now hear me, hear me, and I'm speaking to Abundant Life Family Church. If you're watching and you're from another church, well, I'm not speaking to you about this, but our church, even though we're not back in the building, let's flip the switch and let's go back into full mode. Amen. Of serving God, not like, well, okay, we're not cleaning the building that much because we're, you know, we're not in the building. We need to get our remodeling projects done. We need to get the building in tip-top shape. We need to get the parking lot. We need to get, we, we need to be ready to hit, Amen. hit the pavement running. Yes. Amen. 
instead of, oh, when everything opens up. And I'm not saying we're waiting until, until our, our governor, you know, I was going to post this. Uh, <laughs> Jesus is Lord, and I bow the knee to JC, not JB. That's right. But we're trying to use wisdom. We're trying to be, you know, we're trying to cooperate as, as much as possible, but yet without relinquishing our constitutional right to meet when we see fit. And so we're taking, we're taking steps, and I encourage you to do that. Amen. Again, thank you all for coming. And that concludes, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, hopefully you all watched the, we did a round table with my son and my son-in-law, and we talked a little bit, actually it was the longest round table we did, which is not a surprise. Uh, but we talked about how to be led by the Spirit of God. And... We titled it, well, I titled it how to, Hearing the Voice of God and how to, and how to be, you know, how to, I can't remember what I titled it, how to be led by the Spirit or how to follow the Spirit of God or whatever. How to hear from God. Uh, I feel, and I did a message a couple of weeks ago on living out of your spirit. And I feel sometimes as a preacher that you can feel tremendous pressure to come up with a new title, with a new scripture, with a new message, with a new story. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes we need to just keep going over and over and over and over things until it's working in our lives. So we're going to talk today, I'm going to call this following your born again spirit. I've never used that title before, following your born again spirit. So that gives us the first prerequisite to being led by the spirit of God. If an unbeliever, we'll put it this way, an unbeliever really cannot be led by the Spirit of God in the same way that a believer can. If someone is not saved and they're praying to God, Lord, I need a financial miracle. Lord, I need healing in my body. Lord, I need this or that. The main thing God is going to try to deal with you about when you're not saved is getting saved. You, you might not be concerned about that. You just want to take care of this need. But that is the number one need of humanity is to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that puts us as Christians, once we accept Jesus, we become born again. We become new creatures in Christ. Uh, the Bible says that old things have passed away and all things are, have become new and all things are of God. So we are... A new species of being. That sounds kind of far out, but we are a new creation. We are born again. We, we are born into the family of God. It is a spiritual rebirth. Now, Galatians 3, and I, today I determined, since I'm preaching on being led by the Spirit, I have a few things written down, but I, I thought, you know what? I'm going to preach without notes. And, and that way, if things, if I just get all tangled up or can't think of anything to say, that, yeah, that'll never happen. Well, that's happened. It, it has happened before. Uh, we want, as long as there's records, but I want you to be pulling, and I don't want you to write this off thinking, oh, I've heard that or I know that. Let me just tell you something Norval Hayes said. Dr. Norval Hayes, late Dr. Norval Hayes, was a multi-millionaire businessman who ended up, God called him to the ministry. He's founded a Bible school, which I attended and graduated from over 40 years ago multi-millionaire businessman in the early 60s he was making four or five thousand dollars a week so I so in case you don't know who Norval Hayes was and when I graduated from his school in 1979 he was 51 years of age he'd started a Bible school eventually started a church he started a feeding program he had an unwed mother's home he traveled the, the world but predominantly in the United States speaking and, and here's something that he said in regarding what we're talking about today and I'm going to say it just like he said it most Christians my brother and sister are not led by the spirit of God Amen. Amen. let me say it again, yeah. say it again I'm, not, I'm not saying you because you're not most Christians That's right. That's right. hopefully you're not most Christians most Christians are not led by the Spirit of God. 
Now, uh, is that a true statement? I believe in 45 years of being a Christian, I believe from observation that I have observed and concluded with Dr. Norval Hayes that most Christians are not led by the Spirit of God. So we're going to talk today about the three main ways, and we covered some of this on the round table, so some of it will be repeat, but I'm believing the Lord's going to bring out the nuggets that we need for those that are here in a chair, those that are in a car, those that are at home, and those that are still in bed, and hopefully watch this video later on. Amen. So it's a drive-in, sit-in, and sleep-in service. <laughs> but we don't recommend sleeping in, okay? You know, it's time to get, church, it's time to get the let up. That's right. Here's, what have we learned from COVID-19? Hopefully we've learned some things. You say, well, I can't wait to get back to normal. I don't want, not that things, not that normal before all this happened was bad, but you know what, we need to not just go back to what normal was, we need to go up another level. We need to go up a notch. More than a notch. We need to go up up and up. We need to take the steps that the Lord gives us. We need to examine in light of what we're going to, I think, talk about, being led by the Spirit of God. We need to examine our church attendance. That's right. Thanks for that one amen. And that one horn too. We need to examine <laughs> our church involvement, our serving in the ministry of helps. There are people that are getting here at 8 in the morning, setting up equipment, uh, tearing down equipment, we keep changing setups all the time, figuring out cables, uh, setting up sound equipment, TV equipment, lighting equipment. We, we've been working harder. That's right. Yeah. Some of us have been working harder than we were before the shutdown, but most of us have not. Now, we haven't been able to, but I'm declaring that today we're turning the page. There are, we got some people that are doing landscaping. We need to, you know, have people that do simple things. Come and sweep the parking lot, blow the parking lot, uh, help with the landscaping, help with cleaning, sign up with ministry, say, well, I'm in the children's ministry. You, you know what? You can be in the children's ministry and the cleaning ministry and the landscaping ministry. That's right. And you'll be blessed in doing it. Let's take the load off of some people. Let's just be willing to do whatever we can to get the gospel out, to make the church strong, to make it run smoothly. And let's also, let's not forget, you know, next week would be a good time. We can invite people yes. to church. And I'm sure that this, by next, before next Sunday, probably, we're probably going to technically go into phase three, and then probably the governor is probably going to say, okay, you can have outdoor services if you're social distance. So then, then that should take any fear out of people, and then if they want to wear a mask, they can. Invite your friends, say, hey, wouldn't it be nice to get outside and just have some degree of normalcy? Amen. But that's really not why you're inviting them. You're inviting them to come, to come and hear the word. Amen? Amen? All right, so we're going to talk about being led by the Spirit of God. First thing we need to realize is we can't be led by the Spirit of God if we're not born again, because if we're not born again, the Holy Spirit doesn't live inside of us. But see, if we've given our life to Jesus, we're a new creature in Christ, and, and the Holy Spirit makes us, uh, causes us to be born again when we accept Jesus, and He comes to live with inside of us. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And a lot of times we stop there and we talk about how God wants us blessed like Abraham, and that's true. But then it goes on to say that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. We, you have an advantage over all of your unsafe friends because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have the creator of the universe living inside of you. And if you will learn how to listen and hear and perceive, that's right. yeah. and it's more perceiving than hearing, then God will direct us in the affairs of life. He will direct you in investing. You know, I've lost money in investing before. Have you? I don't like, I don't know about you, but I don't like losing money. I have, I'm pretty good about not doing that, but I have made a couple of big mistakes. Regrettably. And sometimes we don't even learn from our big mistakes. I'm pretty good about buying things and not 
going against the witness of the Spirit because I've been doing this a long time. But I still have missed it where I bought something I shouldn't have bought. And sometimes you just sometimes it could be something so simple you buy something and then next week it's a hundred dollars less. I don't know about you, but I could have waited another week. Right. <laughs> well, because then you can use something else. And see, the Lord knows we have to we have to learn how to trust the leading of the Spirit. Now, here is another thing that we talked about uh, Friday night at the round table. If we're going to pick and choose when we want to hear from God. We're not going to hear from God very accurately. Like we might think, okay, you know, I don't really don't want to hear from God. Should I get involved in the cleaning ministry or the landscape ministry? But if I'm going to invest money or I'm going to buy something of value, you know, and I don't want to get ripped off, then I, Lord, I want to hear from you. Our attitude needs to be, Lord, I want to hear from you whether it's something I want to hear or not. Because see, if we, if we get a revelation, maybe we need to get a revelation of how much God loves us. He is not trying to withhold anything from our life. He is not trying to penalize us, hold us back, keep us on a lower level. He is trying to increase us, but it, it's done His way and not our way. That's right. And you know, there's a whole lot of people, like Norval Hayes said, you know, most Christians are not led by the Spirit of God. Why? Because they're knuckleheads. <laughs> Now, he didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> he would might use the term there, igmos. Ignos. Ignorant. <laughs> they're, they're following their dumb head. They're following their flesh. So you can't be led by the Spirit following your flesh. Your flesh will lead you astray. Your flesh is never going to lead you into the will of God. So, we, as we preached before, we've got to live from the inside out. Now, I've got to define some of these terms if we're going to talk about being led by the Spirit. Now, let me give you three things quickly, and then we'll, we'll try to define uh, and break it up. Apart from the Word, which I don't have time to get into that, and I don't want to minimize the Word. God's Word, I mean, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, right? Uh, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you are in spirit and life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. And there's just so many, you know, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. I mean, we can live our life by the word. But be doers of the word, not forgetful hearers deceiving your own self. So, so, I mean, we're supposed to live our life based on the word. We don't have to pray about it. If it's in the word, we're supposed to do it. We don't have to say, well, I don't have a witness on that. No, we need to just live by the Word. But there are some things the Word does not cover. It covers in principle, but it does not cover with specific, specificities. That's a new word. I just made a word up. Spe how, how do you say it? Specificity. Specificity. I don't think I've ever used that word before. I'm, I'm making a note. Don't ever use that word again. <laughs> don't ever use that word again. <laughs> Just keep it. I need to keep to keep it simple. Put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can get them. Right? There you go. Hallelujah. Where was I? You guys are interrupting me. You know, just all you people watching my live stream, you should have been here. As John Osteen would have said, shame, 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 shame. No, no shame. Be led by the Spirit. Just make sure it's not your your. Your lazy bones right. Ooh, come on now. that are leading you. That's right. All right. All right. So apart from the word, I'm going to give you the three main ways that God leads his people. And I suppose I could, before I give you the three ways, I could give you all kinds of ways that God doesn't lead his people. You know what? God does not lead people by circumstances. Right. Now, people are led by circumstances, but God's not leading you by circumstances. Don't have time to get into that, but if you if you could believe it, I'll save you a lot of heartache. God does not lead you by your mind. God does not lead you by your emotions. God does not lead you by your flesh. And you know what? God does doesn't even lead you by what you want to do. That's that's God leads us by the Spirit. 
man, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. It says that man is spirit, and that's the order, soul, and body. It's not body, soul, and spirit. It's spirit, soul, and body. We are a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. And God, the Holy Spirit, yes, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but our bodies contain our spirit and our soul. And the Holy Spirit lives inside our recreated spirit. So really, in a sense, he's living in our body, but really he's living in our spirit. So when God talks to us, he does not talk. He, God, guys, let me just tell you something. Some people think there's a lot of wrong thinking in the body of Christ. God doesn't put thoughts in your mind. Oh, God put that thought in my mind. God, the spirit inside of us, speaks to our spirit and witnesses to our spirit and then sometimes those thoughts from our spirit will come into our mind but god doesn't speak to our mind That's right. god speaks to us by spirit john 4 24 says god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth he communicates to us with our spirit with our mind we, we connect with the mental realm, with our bodies, the physical realm, with our emotions, the emotional realm, with our spirit, the spirit realm. God is a spirit. We are spirits, so we have got to stop listening to every other part of our being Amen. and focus on the spirit. Amen. When I was in Bible school years ago, the first Bible school I went to, I'm praying and seeking the Lord what am I supposed to do? What's the next step? And there was about five things. I'm not going to take the time to tell that story. About five different options I had. And the one thing, now I'm not saying this to mean that God will always tell you to do something you don't want to do. But the one thing I did not want to do was come back to Illinois. But not because I didn't like the Illinois. Some people think, well, I don't really like Illinois. Well, you know what? Watch what you're saying. Because if you're here... And God sent you here, and obviously you're here. Amen. Then if you start talking against where, somewhere where God has planted you right. and complaining about it, right. the devil will be able to take you out yes. of where God's planted you. Amen. You might feel like you're buried. No, you've been planted. Amen. That's, I, I, I got that from another preacher. I don't know his name, so I can't give him credit. But I thought that's good. You might feel like you're buried, but no, you've been planted. Don't let the devil uproot what God's planted. That's right. So I didn't tell you the three things. The three ways that God leads us are all inside of us. It's not someone from the outside. It's not a voice from the outside. It's not a thought from the outside. It's not someone telling me this. That this person telling me that. It's not a prophecy. It's not a circumstance. It's not an open door. It's not a shut door. It's not a fleece. It's like, well, God, if you want me to do that, then let this happen or let that happen. If this happens, I know you want me to do that. That happens. You know, no! Well, I heard an echo. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the way God leads. That's right. God leads by the Spirit. It's inside. Now, isn't it kind of safe that, it, you know, what, what do they call triangulation, like uh, to... To get a position, you know, yes. you've got coordinates where you got uh, coordinates like on the globe, you know, the north and south, east and west coordinates to find a, a place through satellites. But then other things, you can find distances and all that through, uh, I, I might need some help from some of my more intelligent people here. Uh, is it called uh, triangulation? Is yes. that what it's called? Yes. Think about it. If we use the Word of God for guidance and we use the inner witness in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You know, if you got the word and you got the inner witness, that's all you need. Amen. But sometimes God will give you, say, well, I just want another. I want a third. I want three witnesses. Well, you know, some, God might accommodate you, but here's what I've discovered. If God's given you three, four, five, or six witnesses on something... There's a reason why he's giving you three, four, That's five, right. or six witnesses. You know why? Because it's probably going to be really, really, really difficult. And if you didn't have three, four, five, six witnesses, you would quit. That's right. yeah. Most of the time, you, you need to know, is this a biblical principle? Am I living my life in such a way? Am I thinking thoughts? Am I speaking words 
Am I doing things where I'm going, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, who I'm hanging out with? Is this in accordance with the Word? If Pastor Jeff was here, would he approve? What would PJ do? No, what would, what would WWJD, what would Jesus do? What does the Word say? But then there are things that we need we need something more. You know, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. So you don't have a job, you need a job. That's right. And so let's say you get two job offers. Well, which one do you take? The one that makes more money? Well, maybe, maybe not. The one that's closer? Maybe, maybe not. The one with better benefits? Maybe, maybe not. The one that you know people that work there? Maybe, maybe not. That that's All of that is immaterial. It should be immaterial. I mean, you might think about it. You might even, you know, you might ponder it. But the main thing is, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your highest and best for me? And I tell you what, if you, if you learn how to be led by the Spirit, and it starts with the smallest things in life, it doesn't, God didn't train you on big things where if you miss it, you'll lose your life. God doesn't lead you on wild goose chases to see, you know, turn right here, turn left here, do this, do this, do this. But come on, if you can't even be led by the Spirit in an offering, some people just get into craziness. And they say, well, the, the Lord said, the Lord told me, God said, this is what the Lord told me. Okay, I believe God speaks to people. But a lot of people are saying that and it's not the Lord said. Matter of fact, God did not, I believe in prophets, I believe in apostles, I believe in the fivefold ministry gift, but God did not put New Testament prophets in the church to guide the church and to guide believers. Right. He put the Holy Spirit inside of us, not someone on the outside that may or may not have the right motives. He put the Holy Spirit of God inside of us to give us direction. So we got the Word, and we got the witness of the Spirit. Now let me give you the three things. I'm getting there. The number one way, I can't stress this enough, again, apart from the Word or in addition to the Word, the number one way God leads us is the inward witness. It is not words. It is not the Word of the Lord came unto me saying. It is not thus saith the Lord. It is not hearing any voice, quiet, still, silent, imagining a voice, hearing words, seeing words. It is a witness. It's almost like somebody doing this. Or it's a for or against. It is a, but it's not a feeling. Oh, I don't think I should do that. Oh, it could be dangerous. It's not a, anything to do with our mind, our emotions, our feeling. Our well, I don't want to do that, Pastor Jeff. I don't want to do that. Well, repent. <laughs> a lot of times we don't want to do things that God's wanting us to do. We need to just have the attitude. I want to do whatever. God tells me to do. Amen. And let's say God tells you to do you ever have God tell you to do something where you didn't want to do it? Sure. But it shouldn't take long to get willing. Amen. It shouldn't take long to be willing. It should be just like, Lord, I believe you're telling me to do this. I believe you put this in my heart, Lord. I'm part of me just doesn't want to do that. But Lord, I mean you that's where you pray and you submit your will. Just like Jesus. Jesus had to do that. If Jesus had to do that, guys, we're gonna to have to do that. He had to submit his will in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's not, if God wants you to do something, it's not just automatic where you just, well, if God wants you to do it, you're just going to want to do it. Wrong. God, when God said, come back to Illinois, I mean, I, he, he spoke to me. It wasn't even the inward witness. It was, I think it was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Or it was my, my human spirit. Either one, it was loud enough where I could hear it. It was words. It was not a witness. Go back, to, go back to Illinois and start a Bible study. And as soon as that came, I knew that's what I was going to do. I didn't have to think about it anymore. I didn't have to pray about it. But I've been praying about what to do for months. But I got that word in a church service, lifting my hands, worshiping God, not trying to figure out what am I going to do while we've already graduated. Now we're having a week's worth of meetings. And I still don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm minding my own business, worshiping God. And then that, I heard that. But that is the exception. Usually it's a witness of the Spirit. So the number one way is the inward witness. It's, it's a witness 
It's not a feeling, it's a witness. The number two way that God speaks to us, we're talking about following your born-again spirit, I'm going to call it the still, small voice. It's still, it's quiet, it's not loud. It's a voice, it's words. It's not usually a paragraph, it could be. Usually it's a few words, maybe a sentence, maybe a couple of sentences. It's usually not a book. Well, the Lord told me blah, 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 You know, most of that is a bunch of gibberish. Something Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Hagin's got a great book, probably the best book on how to be led by the Spirit of God. And he said in all the years he traveled as a minister, he said every place he would go, he would get two or three people coming up to him prophesying. And he said, in all those years, he said, only a couple of them were ever God. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prophecies. Now let me just throw something out there. If I prophesy to you, if my wife prophesies to you, if any guest speaker we have prophesies to you, if it doesn't bear witness with what you already have in your heart, forget it. Amen. Say, well, Pastor, well, what if somebody prophesies it? If you don't already know about it. See, the difference between we are, the prophets in the New Testament are not the same as prophets in the Old. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ that they don't have that revelation. Here's why. In the Old Testament, everyone didn't have the Holy Spirit. You had to go to a prophet. You had to go to someone with the anointing to hear from God. Now, there's, there's benefit in getting counsel, but the Spirit of God wants you, He wants you to know on the inside of you what you're supposed to do. But we have got to be in a position to receive. Right now, in, now some of you in your cars, now if you're not in the car, your car, you wouldn't be able to do this unless you have a portable radio with you. Right now, in the airwaves, there are probably walkie-talkie transmissions, radio signals, TV signals, maybe shortwave signals, AM signals, FM signals, wireless mic signals. There is all kinds of signals that we're not hearing because we don't have the receiver. And even if we have the receiver, it's not turned on or it's turned on and it's not tuned in to the right frequency. One of the reasons why most Christians are not led by the Spirit of God, they are not tuned in to the Spirit. They may not even have the darn radio on. Get, you know, you ever hear the phrase, you know, put your antennas up? Yeah. We should live as Christians with our spiritual antennas up, not just when we come to church, not just if we're witnessing to somebody. It ought to be when we're paying our bills, when we're going to work, when we're in the store, everywhere we go. We need to be, not, not be crazy people like we pray about everything, what tie should I wear today? Right. I was going to wear a pink tie, and I changed my mind, and I decided to wear an orange tie. Well, I didn't pray about that. I just thought, well, I haven't worn the orange tie for a while. You know, there's a lot of things you don't need to pray about, but there are a lot of things that we should pray about. Or we should at least be sensitive. We go about our life, but if we begin to go a certain direction, and, we ha and we, there's just kind of a hesitancy about it, then just learn to follow that. Even these tents, and here's a small example. These tents, way before we did the first drive-in service, I was already pondering what we can do because I'm a pondering kind of person. And actually, Proverbs says, ponder the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Amen. I don't make a decision based on pondering, but as I'm pondering, I'm more, I'm thinking, but as I'm thinking, I'm really listening. And so I'm pondering what we're going to do long before we, you had these tents. So I began looking up tents. I began looking at all different tents. I looked at them in the store. I looked at them here or there. I went online. And so I found a tent. And I thought, hey, that's a good price. And I was looking at them. I went to the store. Yeah, they had them. And I was going to buy them. And I just had a little hesitation. So I did. I didn't mean the church was going to buy them. It wasn't like we couldn't buy them. These, these tents were, I think they were $120 apiece. But then I just waited a little bit, and then lo and behold, like a day or two later, they're, they're $80 a piece. And since I thought about it, and I didn't, again, it wasn't even a mental thing. It's just like, hey, I went there, I went and got them, and I bought them. Now, I mean, the church could have paid an extra $80, 
You know, it would have been okay. Or if I would have went on Amazon, I could have bought one tent for $193, but with free shipping. <laughs> well, I got two tents, and I got uh, a couple of carts that we were going to use for the church for the for less than the price of one tent on Amazon. Just by being, not even really praying about it, just by being led by the Spirit, just waiting a day or two extra. But imagine if every single day of your life or every week of your life, you say 500 here, 1,000 here, 100 here, 50 here, 25 here. Okay, how, well, Pastor, I don't make that much. How's God going to prosper me? He's going to prosper you and you stop being a knucklehead. That would be a good sermon title. Stop being a knucklehead. I'm never, that's a good title. Maybe we'll change the title. Stop being a knucklehead. Be led by the Spirit, not by your knucklehead. That's right. That's good. That's good. So, the still small voice is the voice of our spirit. We're a spirit being. Our spirit, now our physical being has eyes. We have ears. Right? Your spirit has eyes. You can, you can see things if the Lord opens your eyes to the spirit in the spirit realm that are not with these natural eyes. There's different types of vision. One type of vision, open vision, where you see something God allows you to see in the spirit realm with your physical eyes. But there are other visions where you might have your eyes closed and then you're seeing it in the spirit with your, with your spirit eyes. Not your natural because your eyes are closed. We, our spirits have ears. Jesus said to him who has ears, let him hear. Well, we all have natural ears, but we all have spiritual ears. But the problem is our natural ears are more open than our spiritual ears. That's why most Christians are not led by the Spirit of God. So, number one is inward witness. Number two, st still small voice. That is the voice of our spirit. Now, someone might say, well, Pastor, I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I do not want to be led by my spirit because my spirit, what if, what if it's something I want to do? That's, I mean, let me address that thought. That's a natural thought if you're born again, your spirit only wants to do the will of God. Now, your mind doesn't necessarily want to do the will of God. Your emotions don't want to do the will of God. Your will doesn't necessarily want to do the God. And your flesh does not want to do the will of God. Your spirit, if you're born again, and, the spirit, and if you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Your spirit always wants to do the will of God. It doesn't matter what any other part of your being wants to do. Your spirit's always saying, let's do the will of God. Let's do the will of God. Let's follow God. Let's follow God. God loves us. He wants what's best for us. This is what's best. We don't understand it, but we're going to do it. I'm going to, or not really we, I am going to do this. And you other people, you be quiet. Body shut up. Mind I'm, not, I'm trusting the Lord with all my heart, leaning on to my own understanding and all my ways, acknowledging Him, and He is directing yeah. my path. Yes, yes. If you're not trusting Him with all your heart, acknowledging Him in some of your ways, no, all of your ways, He's not going to direct your path, or as He's trying to, you're not hearing it because you're on the wrong channel. That's right. Yeah. You're listening to rock and roll when you should be turned into Christian church. Christian station. You listen to the devil instead of God. You know, there are voices in the spirit realm. Yes. Hallelujah. That's good. The third way the Lord speaks to us, and it's inward again, and I'm going to call it a little different than Brother Hagin would call it. I'm going to call it the authoritative voice of the Holy Spirit. Now you may think, well, what's the difference between the still small voice and the voice of the Holy Spirit? Well, the one is the voice of the Holy Spirit. The one is the voice of our spirit. You say, well, I think I'd rather just trust the voice of the Holy Spirit. We cannot determine when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Matter of fact, we can't even determine when our spirit speaks to us. Either if our spirit speaks to us, it's speaking to us. If the Holy Spirit speaks to us, he's speaking to us. There are times where the Holy Spirit, and I don't know what governs this. This is part of God. I don't need to know. Where... When God will speak to you inwardly, it's, and I'm going to call it the authoritative voice of the Holy Spirit, contrasted to the still small voice of our spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, there's no question, did you hear? 
I mean, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's authoritative. It can almost seem audible. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's not like, what was that? Or did I just imagine that? You will not forget it. Now, let me just say this. Now, I know not everyone's experience is the same. In my life of 45 years of being a Christian, I'm not going to say the Holy Spirit hasn't spoken to me. But in that authoritative voice of the Holy Spirit, it is a much smaller percentage of time that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. And here is where the problem lies. And a lot of people, uh, even some ministers I know, they don't get this. They will, let's say they have a witness on something. They will say, the Lord said. Okay, no, the Lord didn't say. You had a witness on it. Is it God? Yes, it's God, but don't I don't use the, the words the Lord said. Matter of fact, I usually say, I feel impressed with the Lord, or I believe this is what the Lord is wanting us to do. This is what the Lord has put in my heart. I'm not saying that as a rubber stamp, so then do whatever I say, because the Lord said. Because I say, I believe why we could miss it. But then the still small voice, which is a word, words where our spirit is speaking to us. Is it the will of God? If, if you're born again and your spirit is speaking to you, yes, it's the will of God. Every single time. Now, if your mind's speaking to you, not the will of God. If your flesh is speaking to you, not the will of God. If your emotions are speaking to you, not the will of God. Your feelings, any of those type of things. Even your will. Well, I don't want to do that. Or I want to do that. I don't, I don't really want that. Or I don't want that. Okay, that's not the spirit. But when, you're, when your spirit speaks... That is God. But I think it's wrong to say the Lord said. They say, well, if it's really ultimately God, why not say it? Because it wasn't the Holy Spirit that said it. Now, so a lot of people, will, even when they prophesy, it's not really prophecy. They're speaking out of the Spirit. It might even be correct. Some people, and in, in, now I'm getting a little deep here, but... Some people, instead of giving a word of knowledge, what they're really doing is they're reading, they're perceiving what's in someone's spirit and they're reading it out and, then, and almost making it like a prophecy, like it's a gift of the spirit where they're just perceptive in the spirit and they're picking things up in the spirit. You can pick things up in the spirit, but that doesn't always mean it's a, it's a word of knowledge. That's right. Does that make sense? Amen. So there's the inward witness which is just a witness. There's the still small voice, which is the voice of our spirit. And see, those, I'm saying these are the three main inward ways that the Lord leads, but inward witness is overwhelmingly the main way that God leads us apart or in addition to the Word of God. The still small voice would be second, and then a really a distant third is the authoritative voice of the Holy Spirit that is loud and clear and usually me that means you really need a very sure word. A lot of times we want a sure word. You know, I'm trying to think, my wife can help me with this. I don't think buying, buying the other church building, buying this building, buying our first house or buying our current house, did we have any we didn't have the Holy Spirit say anything. We didn't even have the voice for our spirit. We just had a knowing. I mean, those are major decisions. Yes. And we might think, well, Lord, I just want to, I just want to hear from you. If you got the witness of the Spirit, you are hearing from God. That's right. Yeah. When you're trying to conjure up a voice and say, Lord, I just need, I just need more confirmation. Well, you know, I suppose it's okay if you pray, I need more confirmation, but don't start telling God how he's gonna do it. That's right. That that opens you up to deception, guys. Yes. Hearing voices, I'm telling you. Now let me use Paul as an example. Uh, well, first off, let's. I, I'm. You know what? When I start preaching, you know what happens. Some of you, well, if you're part of this church, you know this. I lose all track of time. It's all right. I have no idea what day it is. Right. I, I, I know what day it is. <laughs> See, this open air makes me feel like the mission field. You know what? In the mission field, you can preach for six hours. We could just preach, 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 preach. And then maybe we go get lunch, come back a few hours, take a little break, get, get in the shade a little bit. And then just, you know, go to 7, 8, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, we would be on fire. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that kind of for effect, but honestly, at some point in time, 
at some point in time, guys, I mean, we're in the last days. Yes. Come on. Historically, in America, in colonial America, and I already did the research on 1918, so don't pull that 1918 thing. <laughs> the church has never been shut out Amen. for 10 weeks. Ever! That's right. Hope we had the limiter on. <laughs> Pittsburgh church was closed for 26 days. They had the highest death rate in 1918. One out of every 100 residents. One out of every 100 residents. Charlotte. They had a higher death rate, but they were smaller city. They had one out of 44 residents died of the Spanish influence in 1918. Charlotte. Aurora, second largest city. 64 deaths out of 200,000. So that's 32,000 people out of 100,000. That's contrasted to one out of 100 or one out of 44. Not even close. Not even close. Not minimizing it. Not minimizing the pushing towards 100,000 people that have died in America. Not even close. Right. 1918 was 25 times worse right. than where we're at now right. with COVID-19. And that is a fact. Look it up and, you'll, and you, you can find it. You can find it. Anyway. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16, For His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How do we know that we're children of God? Well, we know from the Word, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God is raised from the dead, you will be saved. But then there is also a witness of the Spirit. His Spirit who lives inside of us when, when, once we accept Jesus, His Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Say, well, is your spirit a safe guide if you're born again? Absolutely. Yeah. Say, well, what if you're a baby Christian? Your spirit is a safe guide. Now, the problem is sometimes we're following our mind, we're following our emotions, and we think it's the spirit. We need to not make a move, not make a decision until we have clarity. Sometimes it's just a matter of sleeping on it. Sometimes it's a matter of just taking a day or two or three or four and do not be in a hurry. People who are always in a hurry miss God most of the time. Impatient people do not hear from God regularly. So if you are an impatient person, stop it. <laughs> no, you know, here's why you're an If you're a Christian, you're an impatient person. You know what that means? You're not yielding to the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fear, one, there's a ninefold fruit of the Spirit, right? Impatience for fruit of the Spirit. Well, I just don't have much patience, Pastor Jeff. Oh, what you're really saying is, I choose not to yield to the patience of God inside of me. Because I want to do it now. I'm hungry. <laughs> or when Caitlin, where's, where's Caitlin? When Caitlin was a little little girl, I don't remember how old she said. She, when I was watching her, she came up to me one time, she said, Daddy, I hungry. Aww. I hungry, Daddy. So I guess it's time to feed her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God she spoke up. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of the man, spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Uh, another, that's King James. Uh, another translation says, Spirit of the Spirit of man, the spirit of man, the spirit of man is the Lord's searchlight. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Uh, what? Illuminating where we're to go. It's the spirit of man. God communicates us with our spirit. So back to the still small boys. If we are spending too much time with people, I'm not saying no time with people. Too much time with people, too much time with music playing, too much time with the TV on, too much time on social media, too much time texting, too much time occupied, working. Our mind is, you know, turning, 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 turning. We're, we're pacing, we're, we're occupied. We are not in a position to hear, I shouldn't even, let me take that back, not to hear, to perceive the inward witness. We have to be at a place where we're either in the spirit or we're quiet and we're thinking about something. 
we're thinking about maybe we have a decision to make and we are, the verse I quoted to you is Proverbs 4.26, I believe. Uh, Ponder the path of your feet and all your ways will be established, depending on your translation. Where you have a decision to make, you ponder it, not just try to figure out, well, here's, if I do it, this is good, this is not so good, I'm going to calculate this out. You think about doing it and you're listening and you're, you're trying to be sensitive to your spirit does this, if I think about, I'm going to go ahead and do this, do you have peace about it? Or do you, do you get out of peace? If there's something that you continually, well, Kenneth Hagin gave this example in his book, How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. He said he needed, there was, a, there was somebody who invited him to come to his church and hold some revival meetings. This was many years ago. And he said he'd sit down to write a letter to that preacher. This was before we could make a phone call because people back then, they did not want to make a long-distance phone call. That's right. I know it's hard for some of you young people to imagine, but, you know, some people it's like, you can't make long-distance phone calls. Even when we were, even when I was in high school, when we had, you know, pay phones, when, I would, when basketball practice would get over, the signal was, I go to the payphone, put the money in, call my parents, let it ring twice, hang up, and then they know, come get me, and I get my quarterback. Wow. Yeah. That's right. yeah, that's what we had to live with. That's right. That's right. Don't complain if you still have a flip phone. <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> Brother Hagen gave you a thank you, sweetheart. My, my wife can even be anointed over in the garage. <laughs> She's anointed. Normally she's sitting in the front row, but she, I didn't want her to wilt today. So, but you're, you are you are the strong, you are the brave, you are the few, the proud. You're doing okay, right? It's a beautiful day. You know, it's just something about being outside. It's awesome. So, Brother Hagen would write this letter down. You know, he's going to write this guy say, "Yeah, I'll come and hold revival for you. I'm available this time." You know. And then, you know, he'd be working on it, and then he would just crumble it up, throw it together. He did that several days in a row. And then when the Lord, the Lord actually appeared to him at one point in time, and we think, Lord, why don't you do that with me? I've thought that for years. Well, you know what? You, I've never had the Lord appear to me. I think, well, why didn't the Lord appear to Brother Hank? That's none of my business. If God, if, if God needs to appear to me, well, then he's, uh, he's going to appear to me. And if he doesn't appear to me, well, then I'm, I'm blessed. Amen? Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. You know what? That's most of us. Yeah. But anyway, the Lord appeared to him at one point in time and talked to him about the prophet's ministry. And the Lord said to him, I'm never going to lead you this way again. He said, because I want you, I lead you like all my other children by the inward witness. And he said, the reason why you couldn't write that letter for several days, every time he'd write the letter, and now I'd throw it, he'd crumple it up and throw it away. He did it day after day after day. He said, because see, in your spirit, you weren't even picking up on it, but somehow you just, you just like, no, I can't send it. Sometimes when we, I mean, it's good to be diligent and not procrastinate. But sometimes when you just can't go forward with a decision, just chill out. <laughs> Wait. Right. Pray about it. Don't be in such a darn hurry. Some people never learn. You tell them and you tell them and you tell them. And if you keep, it's one thing if you make a mistake two or three times. But if you're making it time and time and time and again, I'm telling you what. It pays to serve God. Yes. It pays to follow God. Amen. He will lead us into victory. He will lead us into protection. Amen. He will keep us safe. He will, a lot of times, he will, sometimes it's just not being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Just could be unconsciously being led. We need to be, guys, we need to be sensitive to our spirit. Let me bring up Paul. I mentioned Paul. Remember the story. It's in Acts chapter 27, uh, verses 9 through 26. I don't think I'm going to turn there. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to turn there. <laughs> Even though I could. You know I could keep going for a long time. Yes. Paul, remember when he was going to be shipped uh, was it? Well, let me let me turn there real quick, just so I get to make sure I got the right context here. Acts twenty-seven, Acts twenty-six, verse thirty. Then Agrippa said to Festus, "This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar." Then 
they decided they would sail to Italy. They delivered Paul and some other prisoners to one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustan regiment, and they basically put him on, a, eventually put him on an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, and they put us on board. Now, Paul, in verse 20, or in verse 10, he says, Men, I perceive that this voyage will, be, will end with disaster. Now, this is before they took off. And much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Now, let me just say something. Paul, at this time, was standing in the office of an apostle. He was traveling the world. God used him to write more of the New Testament than any man. He was a minister of God. He was an apostle where he could flow in the prophetic. He could flow as an evangelist. He could be a pastor. He could be a teacher. He could flow to a degree in all the ministry offices. He did not say, the Lord said. And I said, the Lord told me. He said, I perceive. Well, why didn't he just say the Lord said? He was getting a witness it doesn't use the term witness. He was perceiving in his spirit something. He didn't say, well, these are the words I heard. Right. Now, later on, of course, he shared what he had. He said, guys, I can't tell you why. I perceive we're going to be in big trouble if we set sail. Sometimes I will say that as a pastor to people. I perceive, this is what I sense. I, I usually don't use the word perceive. I might say, well, this is what I sense. This is what I have in my heart. Well, pastor, this is what we're going to do. Well, Paul said, I perceive. He gave what he had, just spoke it out of his heart, and they didn't listen to it. And if you read the story, if you're familiar with the story, and if not, go back today, read Acts 27 to get the whole context. They didn't listen, and then there was a terrible storm, and eventually they had to fast. They had to, you know, throw everything overboard. But then, God had, a, I mean, Paul had a supernatural experience. You say, but the, now, now let, me, let, me, let me retract that last phrase. Paul had a spectacular experience. Where he said, and let me just read it. Okay, verse 21, but after long abstinence from food, in other words, these people are so afraid they've thrown everything overboard and they have not eaten. And they're not thinking about, oh, I'm hungry. They're thinking about, are we going to make it? It says, then Paul stood in the midst of them. He's a prisoner. Yeah. And he said, men, my gosh, as a pastor, I feel like I, I can relate to this. Men, you should have listened to me. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to enrich myself. I'm trying to help you. You should have listened to me and have not sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster in a loss. You're trying to keep the tight schedule where you lost everything. I added that. And now I urge you to take heart. Guys, I got some good news. You said you should have listened to me, but oh well. Can't change that. It says... Take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship say, you know what, guys? We're going to make it, except the ship is going to be destroyed. We're going to make it, and the ship is going to be destroyed. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying. So that night, he had an angelic visitation. He saw an angel, and he's looking at the angel, and then the angel began to speak. And the angel said... Do not be afraid. Seems like they always say that. Why? Because if an angel appeared to you, you might be afraid. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. Indeed, okay, so he's telling Paul, first off, not even about, hey, hey, by the way, we're, you're, you know, we're, we're about to go under. He's talking about the plan of God. You, God's plan was that he go before Caesar and testify. The plan of God is more important than financial gain. But then God says, and God has granted you all those who sail with you. Say, hey, because you're on this boat, everyone that's here, if they stand, they're with you. They'll be saved because of you. Not because of them, 
They'll be saved because of you. You know, there are people that will be saved because of you learning how to hear from God. And if you don't learn how to hear from God and you don't develop and train yourself, there will be people that will be in hell because of you and because of me. Boy, that's good preaching. That, that warrants at least a few amens. No, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Not one person is going to be I mean, they're, they're not in like a little lake. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, oh, by the way, we must run aground on a certain island. Now, you can read the rest of the story for yourself, you know. There's consequences. This, this story gives us two things. We might think, well, hey, I want God to send an angel to me. It was just as supernatural when he said, I perceived that this... I mean, think of this. If they would have just done that, there wouldn't have been needed to be any angel dispatched. It was for Paul's sake, but it was also for the sake of those people. And don't you think that when it happened, just like he said, when they were fearing for their lives, they wouldn't even eat. Because maybe they throw all the food overboard. That now they're going to listen to this guy? God will put people in your life, pastors in your life, and over a sustained period of time, I don't mean overnight, it takes time to, you know, you gotta, it takes time to trust people. You will see decisions that they make, you will see things that they do, where you will get some de degree of confidence, not to blindly follow them, but God, to, to help you to follow. You always follow your spirit. So let's, for today, let's, let's close with this. The title was Following Your Born Again Spirit, or the subtitle, Don't Be a Knucklehead. <laughs> How do we follow our spirit? We have got to slow down. Amen. We've got to declutter our life. You have got to put in time of prayer, time of reading the Word, time of even pondering a decision you're going to make rather than just making the decision. And you'll be so happy if you do. Now, the other thing is we can't, the Bible uses the term quite a bit, Paul, I've lived in all good conscience. Conscience, if you're a believer, is the voice or, or our conscience is your human spirit. Now, an unbeliever's conscience is unstable. Why? Because they're not, the life of God's not in them and the devil can be leading them through their conscience. The devil can lead, I mean, if you're an unbeliever, the devil's, you're being led by the devil whether you realize it or not. So this is where we have, we should, we should be the kind of people who think, well, how does it, how does every tragedy come out good? Or how do you avoid all these things? How come you never get affected? How come, well, we don't want to be braggadocious about it because if we follow our spirit, our life should look like, it should be, the other people should dream to be us. They should say, what is, what, what, the, what is going on with them? They, why is their life so, why is there such a difference? There's such a peace. There's such a calm. There's such an assurance. They just seem like they got out there. It's not us. It's the whole, it's following the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. So that's what my message is today. I'm encouraging you in light of everything that's been happening. Let's, let's focus back on the spirit. We're a word church, but we are a spirit church. We're spirit people. We are to live by the word, but we're to live by the spirit. And we have got to get our own agenda out of the way. We've got to get our own desires, our own flesh, our own feelings, our own mental, you know, reasonings. And submit it to the word and to the will and to the subtle promptings and leading of the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's pray. Father. Today would be a good day to accept Jesus. If you happen to be watching and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not sure if you've given your life to Him. It's so simple. It's just a matter of really just saying, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. So let me lead you in, that, in a simple prayer like that. Just pray this prayer. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to accept Him as your Lord, as your Savior, then pray this prayer with me. Uh, say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead, and I accept you today as my Lord, as my Savior. Forgive me, cleanse me, 
Give me a new start and make me a new person. I surrender to you willingly, and I'll live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer a minute, God saved you, he forgave you, and he wants to lead you and guide you one step at a time. I, it is the most exciting life, and it gets better and better every single day. Day. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, guys, thank you. You're all out there. You're not wilted. I haven't. No one's melted yet. No. So, uh, yeah. praise God. And I want Christy. Why don't you come up here and uh, close out, so you can all see us. Thank yeah. you so much for coming today. We're going to be praying and seeing what the Lord has us do. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a picnic next week. I I don't know. Uh, we're we're just we're just trying to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some of you are going to have a tan. <laughs> and others will not. Praise God. We're glad you came today. Why don't we all stand up? We're going to close out with a song of rejoicing. And don't forget.